or she'll cover it. OK, so in this example, ladies and gentlemen, again, what I'd like you guys to do is just follow the process. Just follow my process. So when you guys are looking at this process here, basically the first step is to isolate the absolute value symbol. You guys can see this absolute value symbol is not parentheses, right? It's not parentheses. It's absolute value. That absolute value is being subtracted by 6. So we have to undo subtracting 6, which is going to tell us to add 6. Okay? Make sure you guys isolate the absolute value. You cannot create your two cases until the absolute value is by itself. Okay? So if it's multiplied by a number, divided by a number, added, subtracted, undo it. Make sense? Okay. Now, when we have the absolute value um, set equal to another quantity, or not equal to, but using inequality for another quantity, now we can create our two cases, just like we did with equations. So we'll write the, we write the inequality as it is without any um, absolute value symbol. Then we'll write the inequality with the negation, right? Remember how we negated, made it the opposite sign, the other case? Yes? But kind of to your point again, since we're going to have to negate it, that's kind of like multiplying the whole side by negative 1. And if basically what we're doing, since we're multiplying that one side by negative 1, we've got to make sure we flip the sign. Right? So just, like so just like equations, remember guys, we did the positive and the negative, or we did one and we negated the other side? Well, since we're negating, we have to make sure we flip the sign. Okay? Because inequalities are all about multiplying and dividing by negative numbers, like negating the sign. Yes? So every time you do it on the negative side, you flip the sign? Yes. But just remember, you said the negative side. It doesn't always mean it's the negative side. This, if this was negative and that was negative, then yeah. this would become positive, right? I know I just want to make sure that everybody's clear. Whatever this could be, you're just making it the opposite sign, right? So I just want to make sure we're clear. But yes, you are correct. Because it's not negative, it's positive. But yeah, you're going to make it negative. And when you make it negative, you always flip the sign. OK, so now we just solve like we've done before. Subtract 3. Sub oh, I'm sorry. I messed up. I didn't mess up, but I kind of went too fast. So we have an absolute value. We create our two cases. In step number two, when you create your two cases, case number two, flip the sign and negate, which I did. Then we need to determine the conjunction. How are the two cases related? If it's a less than or less than or equal to or a less than symbol, it's an and. This is not it. If it's greater than or greater than or equal to, so when the absolute value is isolated, it is a greater than or equal to. So therefore, this is a or inequality. Meaning we're not looking for the intersection. We're just looking to graph both of the we're just looking to graph both of them. Because remember, it could be one or the other, or it could be both. Um, so now I go ahead and solve. So I have 2x greater than or equal to 10, divided by 2, divided by 2. x is greater than or equal to 5, minus 3, minus 3. 2x is less than or equal to negative 16, divided by 2, divided by 2. x is equal to negative 8. All right, does everybody follow me? OK. Um, for my graph, I'm going to go by 2s. I'm going to change it up. I'm not going to go by 1s this time. OK, so this is x is greater than or equal to 5. So that's going to be a solid closed point at 5 between 4 and 6. It's greater than, so it's going to be all the points going to the right. And then x is less than or equal to negative 8 is going to be over here. And all the values that are less than that are going that way. So you have a solution when it's true for this one or true for that one. Can it be true for both? Because it would have to cover both, it'd have to be on both of the graphs. 